So good morning everybody. Uh, we're going to be doing the uh, conference and I'm doing it directly from the live feed. Um, started a little late because I had to re-download my equipment. Good morning everybody. It's a little bit late because they had the got detained in the security meeting. But now we're here. So we're going to deal with three matters. The, the first one, as every Monday, we're going to do the who's who in the price of combustibles. The second one is the uh, plan of safe of health, which is very important. And we're, we've already made the run of the hospitals at IMSS uh, Bienestar, which is 80 hospitals over the weekend. Oh my goodness. I meant to just make it a little louder. The decision Okay, I hope I didn't mess it up. Sorry guys, but I'm going to have to go back because I cannot. I will have to <laughs> edit this later. <laughs> Oh my word, I think I accidentally moved it too far when I was trying to fix the volume. Sorry about that. So we'll start right about there. Okay. So, as he got a little bit late because the, uh, uh, we got kept up at the um, safety meeting. So we're going to deal with three matters. The first, like every Monday, it's the who's who in the prices of combustibles. The second is the presentation of the health plan, which is very important. And we've already uh, run uh, all the hospitals from IMSS Bienestar, 80 hospitals over the weekend uh, we finished in Tlaquelaco and after this run now we're going to be doing the uh, National Plan for Health so in very general terms so that we won't take too much time then then Alcocer and Robledo will be, uh, and the, the whole team of health will do a presentation that's more ample for the information and media so that you will know the details of this plan. And the third thing today is to give the prizes to the youth, the national prize for the youth, and we're very happy to have them here today, that they're here. That would be the format. So hello, Mr. President, and hello to everybody. So it's the who's who in the price of gas. The regular gas, the highest margin is 21 um, which is a margin of 331, and that is uh, Culiacán. And then uh, Centro Tabasco is uh, the lowest, 17 in Centro Tabasco. Wow, he's going fast. Mega Gasolines, Benito Juarez, 22, 22.79 per liter. It's got a 3.86 margin. And um, Morelos, lowest price, 
at 19 and diesel. And the most expensive uh, was 22.44 in Hermosillo, Sonora. But um, actually, you guys can look at the um, list there and see where you live and or uh, what's the um, most the best price in your area or you can use the app um, but Chevron seems to be the highest price continuously so chicas uh, had the low uh, so they had uh, verifications, they attended 366, and they had, um, oh, those were people that had um, made complaints. They visited 273, and uh, three did not allow them to be checked. Uh, they found irregularities in 23 and uh, gasoline verified without a regular use is 195 and uh, verified 4,279 um, pipes or the uh, pump uh, hoses were verified. So according to the app, the cheapest was uh, 17.59 in Cardenas Tabasco. Anyway, you can see the list there for the, each of the prices. And it's a good idea to come every morning and uh, if you're going to be filling up, check the prices out on Mondays and see who seems to be having the best prices. So, so today, they're giving the recognition to the ones have had the best prices. So this is a moment of recognition for them over these past six months. So, so like a little, these are the lower, the ones that had the highest price, so it's a bad, thumbs down, not good. I wish they would do a close-up on that. So these are the ones that have given the best price. So the service stations now for the consumers. So Divala Group has always had the lowest price and three gas stations in the same group. So these are the ones that have done well. So there was some that, oh, so these guys did good. Kind of cute. So anyway. Oh, there it goes. So they have a cute little jingle. Uh, and whoever comes out on this are the ones that had the best prices for the uh, past three, four months. So. So now they're going to be giving them like a star system from now on with this. They're going to have another little uh, lady uh, that puts stars on them. So they, so they had done extraordinary work lowering their prices, keeping them down. So the ones that that uh, did well get at one of these so that people can see it from a distance that this is one of the ones that had gotten one of the good signs. So they will be giving... Wow, that is pretty cool. 
I want a picture of that. For goodness sakes. Look at, so this guy's getting a, uh, like this cool, so he gets this cool sign. This is the who's who in prices. So this is what they get to put on their gas station. So they're telling them to tell everybody else how they've done it. How did Muchas you do gracias. it, for Pete's sake? La, la doble al grupo seca oh, my word. En Guanajuato, Guanajuato. I la like that. De manera constante en todo el país. Y Orsán del Norte, en San Pedro, Nuevo León, con la categoría de marca en Chevron, la marca más cara. So the most expensive in, in the country was Chevron. So they're going to give them a bad mark en, if eh, they didn't do well. Litro por litro. In the liter per liter. Oh, come on now. So, for the support to the consumer. Come on now. So, they, the ones that uh, have not done well are going to have their... Uh, so it, they say it's delinquent uh, sometimes so they they've t turned them into the district attorney so, so now this is the uh, tanks not the ones in the cars but you know the ones you put in your gas for your home so anyway there's that you guys, I am going to, um, I know this is important to some of you, but I think you can always go back and look at that, and you can see the graphs. So, um, I just wanted to, so I'm going to go past this, because I really want to get to the part about um, the other stuff. Muy buenos días, tengan todos ustedes. Con su permiso, señor presidente. Everyone have a good day. As you know, the system health is segmented. The um, people are divided with their health. And as you can see in the first image here, there's notable differences between the institutions with health. This is an important uh, picture. Interesting. Uh, so that's not the only difference. So there's some problem. So, um, the federal government uh, is trying to give uh, health care to all the population. Okay. According to what they found when they visited the regional hospitals of Insinista, See all those little spots? That's where they went to all of them. So they are making sure that uh, the premise is that the, you need to have free health care available to all the whole population. The Mexican population has uh, problems with access and quality of service. So their plan is to better the um, access and the quality. And so for that reason, they've decided to amplify to 40,000 million in the budget. So so their, all their interests are to maintain the, the population of Mexico healthy and well. So, so they'll um, be getting a little more details on that in a few minutes.
Hello, with your permission. As you can see, the Institute of Health for uh, Well-Being will function like an organism that's centralized in the uh, federal um, with its own patrimony and will be referred to by law or it'll have a referendum. It will guarantee free health services and medications to the population. It doesn't matter the um, uh, social status with so they're get, trying to fix the organizations that comprise the uh, health system. So it's health is like a right, like other, like health, uh, education, and good uh, and healthy, uh, safe environment. The organization of uh, health will be based in uh, primary attention to health, guaranteeing the free access to uh, medications to everyone with continuity of care without restriction of any type of med uh, uh, medical conditions like it used to be. All the um, efforts will be to maintain people healthy and to have controlled health. The activities of promotion for health and prevention of illness will be developed to their maximum capacity without leaving out the attention for the ill via uh, health services, which include hospitals and services that are specialized. As you can see, in the first place, the function is basic from the Institute, and we want to develop that there not be a, a shortage of doctors in all the establishments or the uh, hospitals. That their maintenance will be adequate, that there won't be a shortage of medications in any of the uh, places of uh, health centers. And we will dedicate personnel, and they're going to be making um, the uh, registry workers now full-time employees. They will defini define the principal tools that we will use to make a better system of health in agreement with the states and communication and dialogue that's international and services and a new model of attention. And they will uh, change the international <coughs> program and have uh, social interaction. And um, they will have uh, <coughs> doctors and nurses. And the main function for the institute will be to have people be healthy, to guarantee that there won't be a shortage of um, medication, which became a very important strategy they will plan the uh, uh, management and, and distribution. In this, you are seeing the uh, making sure that there's enough medication. And you can see the pr uh, purchase of the materials and medications to maintain the services open. And they will be coordinating it uh, with federal, and they will collaborate with the um, federal and uh, health safety. They took an analysis of, of needs, and they, um, they are counting with elements that will plan 
and the, for the users of medical services to guarantee medical service that's integral with continuity of care, I guess. As of, as of this date, the purchase that of the consolidated uh, purchase of medications will guarantee transparency and they will meet the demand of health. With, and if there's any failures, they, by the 18th of December, they will have cleared up the um, medications. And I can assure you that the process is going well and that we are on the right road to guarantee uh, that there be enough medications and, and the uh, supplies for health care. So, biological medications will be established as of today. They will have laboratories um, and they will guarantee the best conditions for the Mexican people. The primary uh, principal objective is to make sure that the um, medical services will be where they have the most uh, demand, and that is to say every health center, and they will help, they will be working with all the um, federal uh, agencies, health agencies. And they have four main zones to increase the, um, uh, what is it, to make sure that all the areas have the services and medications. It is to guarantee that there not be any shortage of uh, doctors, general doctors, specialists, and um, um, health personnel in the areas of health care. So in the area of the green, um, you can see the low percentage of health that um, they're going to have to increase. And they're also including IMSS and ISTE. So they've uh, elaborated a strategic plan to, qua to get, um, get the uh, people to go to the remote areas. And they will initiate a process of recruitment uh, for national health people. And they will have uh, doctors for well-being that will fill the vacant uh, places in, in our uh, places in, the, in uh, all of Mexico. And we're going to start um, asking people um, let's see. They will be making sure that they will. They will get to exercise their full um, uh, duties as whatever they're licensed for, and they will actually get a stimulus package if they work in the rural areas. The criteria for selection are here. And um, we want to apply. So how will you? Um, how will? How do you uh, apply? So there's going to be a place. So there's the step. There's seven steps in order to try to get a job. You got to send your. Um, application so where where's this this is on number oh gosh i can't tell what time it is down there i would like to make a picture of this guys i'm sorry but i'm going to take a quick picture and uh, that's how i do it uh, i use my snip to take a little picture and uh, i'm going to take it and move it Ooh. Sorry, guys, I need to move that. <laughs> oh, my word. There it is.
So they've worked on uh, 81 uh, works that are, have already been concluded in uh, 61 health centers. They require 11 um, thousand, whoa, whoa, 11 million in order to do it. The National Plan and Infrastructure, we're going to be doing substitutions, maintenance for health centers. The total expense is going to be thirty-four million two thousand two hundred thousand. Wow, that's a lot of money. <clears throat> this is where they're going to make people will be hired as full-time employees. Eighty-seven thousand people that are going to be working, and the ones that have contracts right now that are precarious, in other words, like um, they don't actually have a full-time job. So now they're going to give them, so now if you have a temporary contract, we will give them a full permanent contract. And we will give a new uh, change in um, wages that they will be um, within the law. There's some workers They've been working there for years. <clears throat> and we're going to start with the ones with the most seniority. And uh, they're going to get the highest pay. There's 6,000 um, that have uh, the more than 10 years. <clears throat> so now he's going to uh, let Robledo talk. So, hello everyone. It's, uh, in 1979, they, the Solidarity <coughs> Plan. Mm. They had signed a contract from Ims Cumplamar to give help to the most rural areas, the indigenous areas. <coughs> and it was there where they installed themselves. These hospitals, 80 of them, these rural hospitals around. And that is where we went since starting in July this year, up until last week, on Friday. In 19 states and uh, 80 municipalities. <clears throat> so we were checking the in, the status of infrastructure, equipment, and to check the whole model in its conjunct, like all together. And in that sense, one of the results of this of these visits and this uh, run. So we're trying to do a plan that is one, the only one of its kind. For those that do not have uh, health care now, they will be first. So, so they're going to be starting a new program that is pending. And some of them are going to be taking going into effect soon. Number one is to amplify. Um, they, they had no uh, full services, so they needed pediatrics, a gynecology and obstetrics, general surgery, um, internal medicine, anesthesia, uh, anesthesia. They needed to increase the salary. Uh, monthly per personnel, um, even up to 20%, and starting the 1st of September 2019. So the Index of Development um, and Security. So they've 
and gotten um, some personnel to integrate into these. And they're going to be covering five uh, shifts, uh, seven days a week, 24 hours. There's going to be uh, um, there's 77 plazas that are definite for uh, psychology, and they're going to be making sure that there's psychologists in every area, especially for youth um, and adolescents in the rural areas. But there's some of them have the program, but they don't have the personnel yet, and it hasn't been able to take into effect. But one of the important jobs that they're taking in these areas is they're programming to have uh, health care personnel. They're going to be re uh, recruiting the nurses and the personnel with the required uh, And they need people that are going to be speaking the mother tongues in the so that they can um, and so that they can train uh, people that speak the language in each rural area. So additionally to that is a program that will uh, with the infrastructure and equipment that will fortify this program. They will substitute two hospitals in the rural areas. Um, Matamoros Cahuila, there's 32 amplifications of hospitals, and uh, two constructions, two new constructions, 32 remodeling, uh, 23 uh, construction of um, places for um, people to stay at and amplifying the ones that are already in there, uh, construction of res medical residences, um, conservation of hospitals. Um, wow, there's a lot that they're doing. I didn't get to read them all, but um, renovation, um, and they're uh, remodeling Oaxaca and Nuevo León's hospitals. And so, 73 uh, renovations. A lot of these population, you know, have their friends. And so they're making a place for the relatives, um, people to visit. Them. Like if they have um, people, that, or their family, their kids, they're going to be able to stay in the hospital with them while they're there. So they kind of have like some sort of hostel or something like that where they could stay at. They will amplify eight of them. And they will have, so they're going to have uh, 61 residences for doctors that are uh, visiting, uh, moving to different areas. Wow, they're going to get housing, nice. Some of them have been working 40 years, and, and some are still operating in the way that they're working. So additionally, they're going to be doing rehab and installation of uh, uh, HR, or whatever that stands for. So they're also going to have uh, helping sexuality, uh, helping to fight uh, domestic violence, um, and then to help prevent drug use. And the last part is the, the creation of 1,039 plazas for the, um, that they will be um, having contracts um, from 2019 to 2024. They will have contracts. So they're uh, consolidating the purchase of medications since it's all going to be free.
So these 106 days that they um, went out and examined all the hospitals, they, they were able to see the exact condition. So now they're working as a team. And everybody, so Social Security, Secretary of Health, all of them are working as a team now. It's not separated. It's one whole team with a strategy for attention, health, medical attention, and free medication for all Mexicans. Wow, that is awesome. We need that in the U.S., guys. <laughs> so the next part is implementation of health services, medic free medications, and guaranteeing the attention universally without restrictions of any type for any um, uh, Mexicans with humanity, quality. Oh, wow. So, hello everyone. It gives us very much pleasure to let you know that today we're going to be giving uh, prizes to the youth for, for the young people of the country. So if they've had um, good practices and they've been helping uh, to uh, better the development of society. So they're doing it by age groups. So here's the, uh, so they've got uh, academic, art, uh, fortifying cultural indigenous, wow, human rights, uh, integration of uh, disabled, science, technology. Why, there's a lot of them. I will have to go back and read it. This year, we received uh, 1,500 um, applications. And there were 34 winners and uh, 23 are women and some that are uh, indigenous and people that are usually margined or forgotten from their communities and their uh, little towns. And they're telling a new story. The 19 stories are memorable um, in this process, historical process we're living today. Um, so in Maria Fernanda, so she's in the academic. Okay. So these are the people that won the uh, prizes. So, health uh, protection of environment. Wow. There's, I'm sorry, there's a lot of names. There's a long list. All these young people won prizes for all the different areas. And they will be giving the awards in a couple of minutes. And wow, there's a lot of them. So, there was 32. Uh, too numerous to mention, sorry guys. I'm not going to sit there and do that. Okay. So there's a lot. So... 
So, so they got a radio program that helps the youth too, and they're getting recognition to these people. And I'm sorry, the names are said too fast and too numerous again. But you can always go back and listen to it slow if you want. But I probably, I'm going to think I'm going to go a little bit fast. Well, I was thinking of going fast on this, but I don't want to be disrespectful. <clears throat> I really should be taking notes. Excuse me. So the problem is there's no time on this because it's a live con, <laughs> so I can't take notes. I'm sorry, I probably should have translated this part. I'm working in the development of, um, for science and education. And here's a radio program group. And they listen. Oh, oh she, she got a recognition to see an inclusive uh, society. Oh, motivate by uh, example and always showing what is possible. I'm 11 year old and I'm a um, champion in gymnastics and it makes me happy because we're able to do everything. I'm a feminist in the periphery how to participate and we've participated regarding uh, feminism by, um, violence against women I'm a person that likes to uh, and is very passionate about his bio what is it like social biology we're gathering information on regarding our environment we're a group by three women that we were a trio that uh, is trying to uh, keep our indigenous roots. This young lady plays the violin and she's a soloist, violinist. Since a child, I've always been worried about the rest and knowing that I can change the thinking and actions of people. It makes me, my job makes me happy to help helping others. Uh, we want to transmit everything that we can do, which is litigation for the um, environment and conservation of the birds and taking care of the environment. Wow, very nice. So this is the youth. Muchas felicidades a todos las y los gobernados. Enhorabuena porque ustedes son el ejemplo de que este país está cambiando y seguirá cambiando. 
A continuación, el presidente de México, el licenciado Andrés Manuel López Obrador, entregará los reconocimientos a tres jóvenes en representación de todos las y los galardonados. Por lo que invitamos a pasar al frente al joven Ignacio Soto sí. Esquivel, galardonado Premio Nacional de la Juventud 2019 en su distinción Ingenio Emprendedor en la categoría B. So he was in category B. <clears throat> he got a prize too. So certificate. Jose Ignacio Soto Esquivel. So I don't remember what category B was, but that's the category. Oh, I think it's the age group that they're talking about. And she's been, uh, she's in category B for arts expression. So they're dressed in their uh, natural uh, attire. And then the Almanis Lisset. She's the youth prize for a, uh, the cult, indigenous culture in category A. I think a category A was the youngest. <laughs> Look at that. Her grupo edad. Oh, so she's up in the group that's up to age 12. Muchas gracias a todos y todas. Thank you all. Bueno, si están todos los jóvenes, este, si les parece, nos llevan un poco de tiempo, pero es algo muy importante. Nos tomamos una foto. So. Venga. So he wants all the youth to come with him and uh, take picture with all of them since they're all there today. Since they can't all, they don't have time to give everybody their prizes. Pretty cool. That's a pretty cool um, award to win for the youth. Oh, a little selfie. Ah, that's our youth today. Selfie time. This is so sweet. So I'm going to be making notes. So I guess this is the older group. Oh, the violinist. Pretty cool. Okay, you guys. Oh. <laughs> you gotta give them their selfies, okay? <laughs> so now they're done with the presentations. So next. So now it's question and answer section. Regarding the health care system or matter. Presidente, señor secretario, ¿cuál es el estado actual de la salud emocional de los mexicanos? What is the actual mental health of Mexicans? Tienen estadísticas actualizadas al respecto. Y la segunda pregunta es, con respecto a la falta de un artículo en la Ley General de Salud que atiende específicamente la salud emocional de los mexicanos, they want to make sure that there's something to do with mental health reform. 
They think there's not enough uh, mental health services and also to help end uh, family violence and its effects on society. It's a very important question. Yes, in effect, mental health a fourth of the person of, of the uh, population deals with anxiety and depression which, which wind up in mental health issues but the principal action is precisely with the youth which means the fourth part of these problems and it's uh, throughout the whole republic. We have taken an action which had not been, been given in the uh, past three generations, which is to reorganize the services of health with a preventive so they're going to be having uh, services that are actually going to go even to their homes. So they're going to be starting with the areas of low resources or means of the most impoverished. So they have a new vision for mental health, and they do have a plan that they're going to be uh, working on to modify the current system. So regarding the matter, and then after we're done with that uh, health care, then we'll start to the general. So today, um, he wants to ask the doctors where are they going to when are they going to start um, being their applications for the doctors so, or teacher and when so there's a, a movement where some that are, have approved candidates. So there's quite a few doctors that are available and at their disposal to will go to all the communities there's to 80 to 20,000 I think he said doctors with specialties would you be willing to they're proposing that there's no need to go make the uh, to bring people that have retired back. But they've got youth that's capable. And they've already been uh, qualified and they're willing to work. Yes, that's another matter that's very important. Like the president announced briefly, we're going to be having a more ample uh, uh, description of the development, social development for well-being. This we can signal today, but they'll be discussing it further. Not just what you said, but also the 40,000 or more doctors that are now working, that are not working in uh, proper areas. And the other thing is, we have 21% of the 44,000 that are, uh, have applications, 21% was accepted. 
there's more than it's still not enough so that group that so because they got into a uh, more of a business model and they weren't really, uh, you know, because of the um, model that they had, uh, they were trying to privatize uh, health care, that they really didn't uh, give opportunities. Uh, and the tests weren't adequate. They were trying to purposely make people fail. And so now they, they're going to be checking to see if people actually have the required knowledge to be able to uh, work in the industry. So we're also going to be dealing with that and with the uh, youth. So we have the, uh, we know that a lot of the people are going to participate, but they're also going to be inviting people and asking people to put in their applications. So where can you turn in your documents? Recruitment. Okay, I wish they would. Recruitamento. Uh, punto mex gov. Somewhere, I didn't finish writing it out, but they do have that. So they divided it in four zones to make sure that there was enough medications. So how long will it be before they get their medications to all the outskirts? He says, the problem is originally was the lack of medication in health centers and hospitals. And we need to guarantee that there will be enough medication. And that is the purpose, all medications, not just from the um, basic square. That's why the consolidated purchases, that there not be any corruption so that the budget will be enough. And also to have a good system of distribution because the excuse is that the communities are too far and how will you get it to them, this medication that is required in these little towns. So then what I've said was that, but if we can distribute uh, the drinks that are bottled these brand names then in general they get all to the uh, outside communities these bottled drinks I don't want to say brands because I'm not here for that purpose to do their publicity but, but they get to the outskirts then how can we not get the medications there? So then the purpose is that there not be a shortage of medications in all the areas. And that we can save lives and obtain the medications that are required for the most outskirts uh, hospitals. 
and that that they distribute in all the communities. So for that, Dr. Alipi, which is the responsible for this action, will be in communication with all the distributors of uh, merchandise in general. And yes, there is a communication and an exchange of ideas and experiences. And these companies that distribute products, cereals, whatever, so throughout the whole country, in order to apply these techniques, these methods for distribution, it's so important that there not be a shortage of medications, that we will create a good system of uh, delivering medications and making sure there's enough. What about in relation to what happened <coughs> in Culiacán? What is the commitment of the president for the Republic? <coughs> Are you going to be uh, uh, So what are you going to do with these uh, people? So when are you going to go to Culiacán to give a message to the people that went through that? That these... So what are you going to say to these people of this message of solidarity? They can't even go. So crime is there. Oh my gosh. She's asking if so did they turn in their resignations, Durazo and this other guy? Why would they do that? They did a good job. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the general, I guess, because you opened the matter. So I'm going to take up this opportunity to inform all Mexican people in a special way, and the people from Sinaloa, and the people from Culiacán, that we made a decision to prevent confrontation and to prevent that they continue to take this violent acts on Thursday in the afternoon. And the purpose of this withholding of this action was to save lives and to prevent a massacre. We had information regarding what was happening, a complex situation, and we could not risk the life in order to detain a presumed person that was delinquent. So we are not going to never to opt for war, for confrontation, or use of force. What is important to us is life. Our adversaries, the conservatives, the corrupt ones, that were in the past governments, used to apply politics of confrontation and violence.
in order to guarantee supposedly peace and tranquility. And that politics that was not truthful and inhumane produced more violence, lots of suffering, massacres. There was even the decision to have raids and exterminate. And that was demonstrated like that by the data of lethality or death. How there was more dead than those that were injured and detained. We made it very clear since the beginning, and it's even written in our national plan for uh, the government that we were going to change this politics, which was absurd and inhumane and inefficient because it did not give results. And in the case of Culiacán, was good in that case in order to confront the two problems or models. They used to yell. The conservatives were yelling that were always quiet like mummies in the past when they were massacring the population. All of a sudden now they're yelling. They were yelling that they wanted violence, that it was necessary to show how strong we were, to show our pants, because they're supposedly so strong and valiant, but those are the pants of someone else. And we decided not to risk lives of people. This was a decision that we took, that my people took, and I agreed with it. Because a government can put in, li in and risk his own life, but he does not have the right to risk the life of other people. And time will pass, and the people of Culiacán and Sinaloa will be able to judge if we did well or if we did bad. I have my conscience clear and I know that we acted in a correct manner. And we are going to continue to attend to the causes that originate violence. You cannot uh, extinguish a fire with another fire, and you not confront violence with violence, or you can't. Our strategy is that no one be without the indispensable to live. That there be good uh, income, good health, attend to the youth, and that we gain a better society so that we can separate violence that those groups that dedicate themselves to illicit activities be isolated. The way they, the corrupt ones are being isolated, the politicians that used to dedicate themselves to uh, looting our country, they no longer have a way to do it, not even to get the backing of the citizens because now they see them as something bad 
and that's the way we also have to isolate organized crime that it not be seen a, a motive for prestige to pertain to belong to a group of delinquents and this is a process and it will take time and I believe that on Thursday in the afternoon we demonstrated that there was a change a true change and we're going to make it fundamental to let you know why we acted this way and why we act this way in this and I'm disposed to, to let you know that they've already said so the directors of the uh, PAN, which is the party, kind of like the equivalent of the uh, uh, opposing party with their strategy, converted, the, they in the past converted our country into a cemetery. Yes, I would like to go to the authority. And if they are requested to go, and to let them know and expose my reasons as to why no to violence. Yes, in all the cases, we will, uh, um, you know, we will detain uh, uh, people that are delinquents. But the most important thing is to take care of life of people. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the way that these operations usually take place in the process of the traditional process. So so she's saying that so she wants to know who's going to be so who is involved? I'm sorry, the, the question is weird to me. Um, Today we will be informing regarding the legal procedures of these things. So are they going to detain that guy? If there's an order, of course we will detain him. And an order to extradition. But if if that's going to put the population at risk and we need to make sure that people are safe. <coughs> Our adversaries would like you to think that uh, they would like us not to act with a responsible way because the people so they were they were the news media was asking us to have a hard hand a strong hand and violence 
even using the ex-president's names, like the way they used to do it. They used to do these things that did not resolve anything that, to guarantee the, the peace and tranquility. It, it was a very difficult day of crisis on Thursday. After 3 p.m. and by the evening, I had already been informed what had happened. And the worst part, and the difficult part, and then the situation began uh, to become more normal. And then now things have returned to the normal way. But there was, during that time, a campaign that was even irrational in the media by our adversaries. Uh, something out of the normal, that they thought that that was the moment to affect us politically. And I always believe in the wisdom of the people. And I know that the majority of Mexicans approved the decision of the government. Imagine that, that these same ones that were yelling like voice boxes that I needed to use force and that we needed to show that we had pants like a um, machismo, like they governed the country. It was the equivalent of acting like you're in charge of a, a, a some kind of repression, like we're a country. You, you need to take care of the people's lives more than anything. That is the main purpose of taking care of the people of the citizens. But imagine if we continued with their operation style. And if we would have lost many lives, because that was the evaluation that we did. Many would have lost their lives, especially innocent people, the population, the civil population, not just the delinquents that are humans also, the soldiers, but we need to protect them. We need to uh, take care of them. But also people, civil, civilians. So today, even though you're asking me about this, it's not so strong like like it, like if you would be asking me today if there had been a massacre so therefore you wouldn't be talking about perhaps um, someone turning in their resignation of Durazo or the, or the, so even if you weren't asking for that, independently of that, 
if it was good or bad, if it affected us, or if someone needs to re quit, or what's most important is to have the your conscience clean and know that you're acting with humanism. That is what's most important. So you figure that we would have lost about 200 lives, but also the cabinet recognized that it had to do with an operation that was precipitated. So are they going to sanction whoever it was that decided to do this uh, action? Yes, we're examining the situation. Uh, the Secretary of Defense, uh, we're about, they're evaluating, and they recognize that, in effect, that it was an action that was precipitated. They did not have uh, enough preparation, and they did not act with precaution. So we're evaluating and examining, but the important part is that as they committed this error and lack of preparation in the operation, they made the decision to stop it because in the past or in other times, well, it was even if there were collateral damage, there was a president that used to say like that, there's going to be collateral damage, but there's going to be good results. And in reality, there were a lot of collateral uh, damage, but there was no good results. So yes, there is two parts. First of all, you have to investigate and analyze the failure of the operation. And then the other part, the decision to, um, to stop it or stop the action to prevent the loss of human life. Second question. In the past few days, presented an initiative uh, so, uh, regarding alcohol and tobacco taxes, and it did not pass. And they celebrated that Okay, so it looks like there were some family-related uh, people that did not get a bill to pass uh, that was supposed to get tax in, uh, uh, I'm sorry, on uh, alcohol and tobacco tax did not pass because they had uh, relatives and friends that were on the board. <laughs> I don't know about this. Uh, the reason... There has been some time, and I've repeated it here several times, I spoke that there would not be an increase in taxes, and that there would not be any new taxes. And when they elaborated the uh, 
project and they presented it to me. The uh, people from Hacienda, this project, that they've increased taxes. We had made a commitment of not increasing taxes. And of course, they can modify it, the initiative of the project. But the definition, the political definition, it is also in the development plan. And I repeat, if there's no corruption, if there's no luxury in the government, and if you reduce the cost of the uh, government's operations, you, then you won't need to increase taxes, nor create new taxes, nor indebt the country. That was the commitment, that we would not in increase the taxes, of, I mean the prices of gas, and diesel, and gas, or electricity, and we're complying with that. So perhaps, um, maybe they had planned uh, to increase the taxes due to some politics, but my politics is not to increase taxes, and I made that very clear. And so now that they're about to approve this uh, law of, um, what is it, uh, income, and they were proposing to increase the projection of petroleum in order to obtain more income. They talked about 25 additional million in order to, like, to have like a little a way of holding money back so that they could have access to it later. That's kind of how they used to do it in the neoliberalist time. And they used to take some of the money from the budget, and then they would raise artificially the, the income in order to have this purse. And then they would divide it amongst themselves to all the ones that they solicited it. Or they would pressure by, by uh, striking or protesting. Governments, social organizations, universities. They had this so-called, um, uh, where they would divide the money amongst themselves, and they utilized it. But we don't want this. We don't want to uh, present a law of income that's artificial. It has to be a reality in what is what we calculate we're going to get in income. <coughs> and to be realist and to be cautious. That's what we're going to, this is what we're going to get in rent taxes, and if possible, we need to calculate a little lower, because it's better to be on the underside. One of the characteristics, <coughs> it was recognized in Mexico and in the foreign places, is that they uh, you need to, if you have a, a healthy uh, plan, you won't have a deficit, because deficit is a debt, and we can't do that. And that's what I'm going to let you know, or my comment. No, 
If it has to do with parties, I don't get involved. And it's not my area. I don't, don't ask me about parties. And I'm talking about like different uh, political parties. So we have a, something about an investigation regarding some works. So they had 25 million in, in Fonavit. La Auditoría Superior de la, Fe, de la Federación, perdón, reportó que en el gobierno de Enrique Peña Nieto no solamente se gastó ese dinero, sino además dejó un adeudo de 327 mil millones de pesos a pagar para el año 2033. Mi pregunta es, señor presidente, si existe información precisa sobre en qué se gastó este dinero y qué va a pasar con el adeudo si seguiremos siendo los ciudadanos los que asumamos los costos de la corrupción. Y ahorita le hago la segunda pregunta. Por favor. Sí. So there's some kind of information regarding how they spent the money. Apparently, there was some money that was used that was supposed to be left in the budget for an infrastructure. And it looks like they also left 300,000 also, 300 million in debt. A 237 servidores públicos por distintas faltas administrativas. Sin embargo, tenemos documentos del SAT que también ahorita se los voy a hacer llegar desde el 2016 que revelan que hasta ahora no se han cobrado 72 mil millones de pesos en créditos fiscales a servidores públicos por actos de corrupción y que causaron Estado. Es decir, que son casos peleados en tribunales y quedaron firmes. Pero también hay 822 mil millones de pesos en sanciones a empresas que le deben al SAT en el 2019 y tampoco se han cobrado. Y hay un caso so there's apparently a lot of things that were pending, um, money that has not been uh, recovered and that people that were supposed to have uh, um, so the, apparently they're sending the the uh, documentation regarding um, money that was taken and not used for the appropriate things and basically they're not following up on it and why are they just letting it sit there 966 million that, that were taken by uh, corrupt officials. Can you commit with your government that all this debt that is that they can uh, transfer it to the to the fund that they can return to the people that which was stolen? Yes, we're doing that. All that has a debt in public, um, they need to pay it. And that's why we decreed that there's no uh, condoning taxes. And it's about to be approved a reform in Article 28 of the Constitution. Prohibits monopolies and tax <coughs> taxes. So they're doing reform on that, and they're also uh, tax evasion. And they're also going after the ones that are falsifying documents. And the conservatives have been defending these points. They didn't want it to be a crime to falsify uh, documents. So they're demonstrating exactly what they are. 
But what we want is to end corruption and impunity, and evenly across the board. That is to say, not just uh, not just to punish the one on the bottom, but <clears throat> the one who can't prove their innocence, but or pay for the innocence. But we need to end with uh, impunity from top to bottom, because it's double condemnable that the public official be the corrupt one. And you need to end from the top to the bottom. And that we're already doing that. And it is not a matter that, that could be done from night to morning. It takes time. But it's not also not so complex. I'm in that sense optimist. I know that we'll be able to sweep corruption away. And we've already initiated that. And at the top, there is no corruption. Because it is intolerated, it's not permitted. And what we can recover according to the law, because they've taken states, Recently, they had a list of who owes taxes, but all of them were not on that list. And, and I said, wait a minute, that they didn't let the biggest ones be known. Why? Because they have doctors. Um, <clears throat> attorneys that are protecting them from disclosing and you can't let it be known if they um, if they've got stays they've got to protect them for those that request these stays and we need to be respectful of the legality so we have the information but we can't let you know because there's judgments and legal procedures. And we want to end corruption and do it via a legal way and not in, in an arbitrary way. But we need to follow all the procedures and be respectful of the judicial power and the district or the attorney general of the republic. So now the women in the back. Today, they let us know that they canceled credit that were, they forgave taxes to some people that were involved in narcotics trafficking. So isn't that contradictory? <coughs> what happened? We would have to revise or review that regarding this matter. Whenever we made a decision that we cancel con, uh, condoning, it was two months approximately. And there was already, they had already canceled a few by then, cond uh, or condoning, condoned, because it was the inertia. That's what Hacienda used to do with the SAP. And it was legally permitted. They would do the paperwork until we found out. And I gave the order that they would cancel con, uh, condoning. So it's possible that it has to do with 
that uh, condoning from December to July, August and October. He says, I don't think so. If it is in that way, <clears throat> they would have committed an illicit act. That is to say, it would be a, a grave crime of the server who authorized them. And if that's the case, then he condoned uh, taxes. After the decree, then you would have to go. He would have to quit. Without doubt. Anyone who condoned taxes after that date. And and then we would turn them into the uh, competent authorities. But, but we need to see if that's the case. Sometimes they don't obey. Uh, well, sometimes it's not actually the truth, so we need to make sure. We'll check into it. We'll get a report tomorrow. I don't get involved in these things about something, something that is <laughs> more for the... This is a matter for that uh, periodical uh, reforma that deals with those kind of matters. They wouldn't say anything if there was differences in uh, someone that was from the uh, uh, party fun because they have sympathies with that group. It's a conservative newspaper. What about the National Guard? But we don't get involved in these things. Hello, Mr. Secretary. What's going to happen with the politics, with the uh, pregnancy prevention in adolescents? Eight and nine-year-olds that are getting pregnant. Are you going to be <coughs> doing with this uh, matter in particular? Yes, we still have not resolved this, but we have changed, but not left what they were currently doing. The prevention seems to be something that is being uh, repeated, but it needs to, we need to change this problem that originates in the family and in the community that they've abandoned uh, in a lot of cases. We, we know that it happens in the most vulnerable population, but also in a series of months. So they integrated the politics of prevention of um, uh, pregnancy in adolescents. And of course, this is from IMSS and the Secretary, which is in development. Mr. President, my next question. Wait, he has a question. Now that we visited the 80 hospitals, the program that most called my attention was a program that joins the union, the youth, which is called CARA, which deals with adolescents in the hospitals. Four matters. No violence. Non-violence. Um, no to addictions. 
Eso es muy importante. Orientar, concientizar. To concentralize regarding the, the damages. The third one is... <coughs> Um, to health, uh, healthy foods, to prevent obesity. And the fourth action is prevention of pregnancy and adolescents that are unplanned pregnancies. And that's why we're going to have psychologists. They're going to be working with the youth, and they're also working with the with children for early early prevention. It's very important. And your question was very interesting to me. Because it is a problem that is we confronting and that we require much information, <coughs> like that of addiction. And we've dealt with that matter. And I want to say to the media, like they're doing, but to help us to to let us to Porque let the youth know the damages de, caused by um, drug addiction de, de que nos mucho, and uh, delinquency de, estas bandas, and these uh, jefes, gangs their groups mafia leaders this attitude of eh, illegal, uh, being pero, powerful that's illegal but if there's no consumption, and if the youth separate themselves from drugs with information and orientation, that's one way to isolate these groups. If there's no consumers, <coughs> then we can gain it. If they or you educate them that these chemical drugs are poison and uh, they destroy. The orientation campaign for not consuming drugs in order to tell the youth that that life is a suffering life. That's the equivalent of being corrupt. That type of activity that you should not take that road of using drugs. And, and we talked, I used to say, I said to Jesus, to amplify the, the campaign, the state of being Mexican, or the state of Mexico, does not only just have the armed forces, but it has other instruments in order to guarantee peace and tranquility. One instrument that is important is the budget. <clears throat> Six billion pesos. It's too hard for them to beat the state. There is not a group, any force, that has more power than the state. <laughs> because it's not just a matter of the military, which is, which is not just the little, but we don't want to use it. We don't want to use it that way. 
es el presupuesto. It's the budget. Es la política de medios, It's de información, de politics of media, no information. De Before they didn't used to talk about this matter. Entonces, si intensificamos la campaña. So if we intensify the campaign <coughs> of orientation so that they don't fall into consumption of drugs, will advance a lot. That is the purpose. And my second and last question. Is it possible that you have someone lying to you? que Ovidio no estaba dentro de un domicilio, estaba en una marisquería y había comensales con menores de edad. So he says someone's lying to you. Alfonso Durazo también este, fue compañero de primaria, hasta sexto año de primaria de Ovidio, eh, tenía esa información, tiene la información que en este operativo habrían participado agentes de la DEA. No, sabía del encuentro del gobernador de Sinaloa semanas anteriores con el titular de la DEA, Mire, estos temas. Sí, este, no me gusta la especulación. He says, no, I don't like no, speculation, because the guy no, was saying, the D, did you hear no, that the no, DA no, was involved, no, that no, someone no, was knew him from no, childhood, no, and yes, I have the information, no, and I do not no, permit no, anyone manipule. to manipulate me. No, me compare. And don't compare me, eso sí because that does make este, me he, no es heated. Hacen las cosas y yo no me don't think they do things and I don't find yo out. Lego. I si usted haga lo que no. I don't delegate things and say you do what you want. The president knows what's happening, y toma las and he makes the decisions que para that Um, guarantee the life and the health and welfare of the Mexican secretary, secretary of the cabinet. I do have the information. Nothing of what you said is is what I something I know. Of. And in the web, sometimes they say things. I'd rather have excesses of information in the web. Then there'd not be any information like it used to be. Because before, they controlled the media, almost all of them. And it was a complicit silence, but not now. Now we have so much information. But We just need to know which one is subjective and which one is not. And what information has a purpose that, that is basic or uh, electoral. And the media that, that lie, the independent ones, when all they are is voice boxes of uh, uh, created interest groups, but they disguise themselves as independents. And then they get mad when we tell them that they represent the conservatism and they represent what we used to suffer from, the corruption. Because that media that is now opposers to our government They were the ones that were covering up. They were complicit. They would burn incense to protect those that were looting our country. And no one ever said anything. For example, this regarding violence. Imagine how many murders, how many deaths, how many massacres. And that was their information? No. No. 
They used to quiet it. Violations of, of rights, human rights. And that is why we gave the order to exterminate, or they gave the order to exterminate. They even said um, the, the ones that were in charge of the operation that there was an order from above to clean because on the top they would take care of the human rights. That is liberty to repress that doesn't exist anymore. That does not exist. And that is why they would like for us to return to the same. Imagine if on Thursday if there had been a lot of dead how would we be looking right now? It was... They would have um, halted the process of transformation. It would be to detain the possibility of a true change in our country. But if that was the intention, like the attorney said, to accept without conceding, they, they, they didn't gain their purpose. Do you have knowledge that it's been 20 days patients of Puebla have that have to go for, for levodopa with people with Parkinson's? They said that there's national uh, shortage. And some people have to go to these centers to wait to go to be if they can get the medication. What do you say to these patients and families of patients? And the other question, how is it going with the the uh, reconstruction of Hospital 25 that some patients that were affected by the earthquake some people have to go 20 to 30 kilometers to get their medications in the rural areas thank you in the third trimester of this year the social security closed about 98% and 2% that it's possible they have a shortage in the different areas of the country. It's a very important number. Every case of medications like this type that are controlled and need to be revised, <coughs> cases, sometimes it's a provider that is taking their time. There's some cases that were delivered directly to the patients, and some of them are delayed. There's no specific situation that, that it happens in the whole country. In these cases, we need to check them one by one. And we have dynamics of communication directly, so they can have all the information. Of course, there's cases where there's some need, and it, there's a backup from the providers. 
and they need to revise. But in this in particular, I have knowledge, but we have to go case by case, imagine how many, and to let the patient know when he's going to get his medication so that we don't affect him negatively. Another matter, effectively, after the earthquake in September in 2017, there were several hospitals that were damaged. In Puebla, there was a hospital that from one day to another one was, they lost that hospital. In the hospital of Zaragoza also. So we take these cases after the earthquake, where practically all the next year, in September of 2017, in the case of San Alejandro, we had to uh, make a, dic a dictation and what was the destiny of that. We had to make a decision uh, to the option whether we were going to keep that hospital or not. So they've decided to demolish it completely. So we've um, fixed one floor and a university hospital is being used in the Red Cross and we're letting them do services there. In the case of Zaragoza, by May or July of this year, they detained it because they didn't even have the operation for the uh, there's a lot of people in a certain area so they've made a solicitation to demolish it so they decided to hire the um, army to do the demolishing. So they have to undress the hospital. So you have to go... Um, uh, so there's a lot of movement and material. So that's why they made a decision to have the uh, military to do the uh, the work because they've shown their efficiency when it comes to getting uh, civil jobs done. So, so there's some things that were just held back because they had no documentation um, or permits had not been received for like say for example demolition and so now they're going to recover that area so I think they're going to make new hospitals where they're removing they have to demolish the ones that are there and start over so they're going to be putting one in Puebla. So we're going to go to here, and tomorrow we'll continue. And tomorrow... So tomorrow we won't be giving any uh, prizes like we did today. But congratulations to the youth, the women, and the men, the youth, young men. They got these prizes and a uh, loving um, hug on our behalf. And tomorrow, of those that want to know more about Culiacán, It'll be tomorrow. Only questions and answers.
How do you like that? So that we can get down to the matter. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, we'll practice on that. And tomorrow, we'll dedicate the whole day to that. And regarding Culiacán, because this is the most important thing, not just the uh, note and yellow <laughs> journalism, <laughs> is that in Culiacán, it's back to normal. It began to normalize as a Friday. And on Saturday and Sunday, there were baseball games. And today, the information I have is that everything's back to normal. And I'm sending a hug to all the people of Culiacán and all my affection and all my endearment for the people from Sinaloa. And to let you know that that Sinaloa is becoming or doing well. It's a, it's a state that stands out in sports area. And yesterday they had a game, or day before in the evening, from Astros and Yankees. And Astros pass. I did my prediction from a month ago. And I said that I said that they would finish in the World Series. The Astros and the Cardinals. And there, that there was no Cardinals. But yes, there was Astros. And so in Saturday in the evening, they had such a game of nine innings, and I had time to see it in Oaxaca, and they were in the ninth inning, winning Astros to four to, to Yankees. And then our um, countryman comes in. And he was also from Sinaloa. So Astros has two of these guys from Sinaloa that are Mexican. And so and he won they hit a, a home run in the ninth inning and the Astros came in and just before they closed it was a tie game and they four and they got one more and that was with all respect you only see it in baseball so some, someone he called to be a, like a horse oh because he kicked the butts of the Yankees at the end and that's how it went in so the Astros Washington and tomorrow they start. So he thinks that in Sinaloa they're, they find this important too. And we have to think in life, which has so much more to do than a bad moment. All right, cool. Goodbye.